Greetings in the name of Jesus. Coming from TRC, the Resurrected Church. We hope that you had a blessed morning this morning. Right now, we're going to try to get in the Word of God and try to break the Word of God down so that we can understand what God is talking about in the Word of God. Today's message is do you want your blessing? And we'll be coming from 2 Kings 5th chapter in the first verse. Like I said, do you want your blessing? Now, verse 1, chapter 5 of 2 Kings. Now, Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria was a great man with his master. Take notice of captain as we continue to read. And honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in vain. But he was a leper. Understand how God Gave them deliverance. Syria deliverance. Most people thought God only dealt with the Israel. Like the Hebrews. But there. God delivered Syria. Through Naaman. And his master. Verse 2. And the Syrians had gone out. By companies. And had brought away captive. Out of the land of Israel. A little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife. Verse 3. And she said unto her mistress. Would God my Lord were with the prophet. That is in Samaria. For he would recover him. Of his lip. See. Look how God is working right now. Naaman. A late leper. A little maid. A slave out of the land of Israel. God is working in order right now. Let's go on to verse 4. And one went in and told his Lord saying. Thus and thus said the maid. That is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said. Go. Go to Go and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold. And ten changes of raiment. He went. He took a letter to the king. Saying whatever intent it was that we continue to read. But understand. Do you want your blessing? That is today's subject. Let's go on to verse 6. Chapter 5 of 2 Kings. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman, my servant, to thee, thou, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass, verse 7 of 2 Kings chapter 5, And it came to pass, when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make a lie that this man does sent unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. Now, sometimes we expect too much from man, mankind. Our request could be excessive and demanding. We're talking about a natural human, and it could, could cause people to just break down because of what. We demand out of them or what we expect out of them, and they could just it could just affect 
how they even think or how they even living. This man was sent to the king of Israel to get so the king could recover him of his leprosy. And the king had no such power to do so. But how many of you know that God is the only one to do this thing? But he went so far out of his mind, he ran his clothes. He didn't know what to do because he thought he was on the brink of war. But the man of God stepped in. Listen. Verse 8. And it was so when Elijah, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. The man of God found out about this, sent to the king, told the king to send him to him, because he knew a man that can do this thing. Let's go on to verse 9. Now Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elijah. Remember I said about captain. Take that in mind. He was a captain. And Elijah sent a messenger unto him saying, go wash, go and wash in Jordan seven times and thy flesh shall come unto thee again shall come on the, again unto thee, and thou shalt be clean. A captain stood at the door of the prophet. The prophet sent a messenger. Keep that in mind. Verse 11. Now, Naaman was wroth. Why? Because he's a captain. And they sent a messenger because of his entitlement, because of his title. He feel, felt like that the man of God should have came to him. Verse 11. Now Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought, I thought he would surely come to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and strike his hand over the place and recover the lip. I thought, my thought, if this person would have laid his hands on me and called on his God, I felt like he should have done it because I'm a captain. I have a reputation with the king of Syria. And you are just a prophet. You should have came to me and performed this act. But I was wroth. I turned away. You know, we can ask for prayer. And, but if we think that is not benefiting us, or they saying things that, even though it's the truth that we're not edified, we begin to reject that prayer. Rejecting prayer. Why would we reject prayer? Because we feel, feel like it don't benefit us at that moment. But God, had it worked out and from the beginning when he they came and took the little maid from out of the is out of the land of Israel. Let's go on that. Verse 12. Are not Abana and Far Par rivers of Damascus? Better than all the rivers of Israel. May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. Now we can think that because this church or that church have many more members than the next one, we feel like they must be doing something good there, something right. Therefore, their waters might be better than that. We can think this way. I know they can reach God. They got plenty of me. They got plenty of members. I know the grass might be a little greener over there. I thought it would. But God is saying right now that when he thought that 
there was better waters there in Damascus than in Israel. Maybe from a physical or a, a, a point, it was cleaner. But things had to happen in order for him to get his blessing. Let's go on down. Chapter 5 of 2 Kings, verse 13. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldest thou not have done it? How much rather than he said to thee, wash and be clean. You know, it's the little things that get us. Oh, we can go perform a big act. But when it comes to the little thing, wash and be clean, have faith and be delivered, we begin to go away. I can't do such a thing. But God still is working in order. And I'm going to show you how. Right here, how God worked this thing in order. And I'm going to get to the, what we're talking about in just a second here. Like I said, captain of the host, a young woman, slave of Israel, knew about the prophet. She waited on the leper's wife and introduces the prophet of God to name his wife. And one heard it and went back and told his Lord. Now, Naaman, he went. It, this is the only how God is working this thing in order to get him clean and get him a blessing. Let's go on to verse 15. And I call verse 15 the true blessing. 2 Kings chapter 5 verse 15. And he returned to the man of God. Excuse me, excuse me. Chapter 5 of 2 Kings, verse 14. 2 Kings, chapter 5, verse 14. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came Again, like unto the flesh of a child, and he was clean. This is what had to happen. First, humility had to take place. He had, I would say, a ram in the bush when his slaves came back and told him, that if God would have, if the man of God would have asked you to do something great, you would have done it. Now this little bitty thing, you, you could do that. So humility, by listening to his servants, and then obedience to what the man of God has said. And the Bible saying right there, he had, his flesh came again unto him, like unto a child. A little child. Basically, new flesh. And he was clean. So everybody might feel that this is the blessing. I have been healed. I have been delivered. I've been set free of a certain situation or whatever. But the true blessing of this matter wasn't only to cleanse Naaman of his leprosy, but it was this. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 15. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and came and stood before him. Now the man of God is standing before him. He had done obedience. He was humbled himself, and he had been clean. Humble, obedient, clean. We consider that's a blessing. He was clean. Oh, yes, sir. He was clean. So we believe right now 
everybody in the world will say, that is a blessing. But this is the true blessing. And he said, behold, now I know that there is no God in all earth but in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. Now, let's stress this out right here. When he said, I know now that there is no other God in earth, in all the earth, but the one that Israelites serve. God didn't have no respect of person. He delivered Syria out of the hands of whomever they would. Syria had robbed Israel. God had wrought deliverance for Syria. But then here come a Syrian that believe in another God saying this thing. This is the truth. This is what God has wanted us to do. Why are we on a journey to be healed or to be set free? The blessing is this, that we now know that there is a God that healed. And it ain't the one in Syria. That's what Naaman was saying. Then he also converted and said, take a blessing of thy servant. God wants us on to believe and trust that he is the only God. The same one that the man of God had done the deliverance by telling Naaman to get in dip in Jordan seven times. Now, I hope this word somehow get into you, your spirit, and that you understand that it don't stop when you heal from cancer or diabetes. People get that blessing some and, and they turn away from God. They pray and cry and believe at times. But the true blessing is that I now know where God is. After he has healed you or delivered you or set you free from whatever, you have to continue in him. You have to continue to believe in him. It's not hard. But sometimes it don't seem easy as well. But God will deliver. God will set free. And my word to this question that I had in this text, do you want your blessing? Is to get your blessing. Amen. And God bless you.